Alessandro Colombo is the director of uh, uh, IED, IED, uh, Istituto, Istituto Europeo di Design. Um, Alessandro uh, will explain how ideas are wearable. Wearable ideas. Alessandro. Buongiorno, thanks Giovanni and thanks Luisa Veroma for inviting me, for having me here in this uh, Fashion Technology Summit. It's a great opportunity to be in the center of Florence uh, and be able to to speak with the, all the world about, uh, about what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to speak about, the title is Wearable Ideas, and of course I'm going to speak about wearable technologies, which is, is a big question mark in the head of uh, most of us, because, I mean, what we're, uh, we know what we're wearing now, but uh, we don't know yet what we're going to be wearing in 10, 20, 30 years. So, uh, my mission uh, today is to provide you with uh, more doubts about it. And um, which I think uh, can be interesting. So ID Florence, ID first of all uh, is a uh, Instituto Europeo di Design, and um, is a is a school uh, for uh, that uh, serves uh, and educate uh, in the fields of uh, creative industries. We are divided into four departments. We have fashion departments, design departments, uh, visual arts, uh, and communication. Uh, we, we are quite lucky for that because we are not a vertical school, but we can work very transversal. And that's very interesting because uh, fashion students can speak with design students, design students can speak with, uh, uh, with graphic students, uh, we have uh, e-commerce courses, so it's very important that someone that is designing fashion or products can speak straight away with someone which is thinking about e-commerce. And um, ID was, uh, b was founded in uh, 1966 in Milan. We have now seven campuses in Italy, uh, two in Spain, two in Brazil, and one, uh, one in China. So we're an international network. And of course, we're based in Florence, not far from here. And uh, what we're doing in Florence, uh, I'm going to go uh, after and speak uh, about what we're doing. Uh, we are, uh, we are, our project is called uh, I Craftsmanship, uh, I Technology, which I think is a good resume of what's happening, uh, what's happening in this area of the world. Of course, craftsmanship. Toscan is very famous for craftsmanship, and it will be always famous for that. But technology as well is quite, uh, is quite, uh, is quite spread. It's quite present. Uh, there's a lot of universities that uh, do amazing things about it. There's Fab Labs. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's amazing companies as well that uh, even the Florentine people doesn't know. I'm gonna go after and uh, and uh, and tell you more about it. And uh, what we did uh, last year uh, has been a very very interesting project because. Uh, we uh, launched a course uh, in uh, fashion, textile, and interaction, uh, which is something that, uh, um, which is a course that was sponsored by some companies. Uh, it was very interesting because we, uh, along with students, professors, and company, we try to look ahead and uh, to think forward, to see what's the, what's the reality now, and uh, try to see what, what can happen in, in some years and see what can be the future of what we're going to wear, because that's the start to be really interesting. You know, there are products on the market now, so we really have to start to think, start to look at. So I was speaking about doubts, because I think uh, uh, when we have doubts, uh, uh, our, uh, we stimulate curiosity. And uh, when uh, we are curious, uh, uh, and we have a pragmatic curiosity, uh, that can turn us into pioneers, and that can produce innovation. And that's what I was saying before, you know, let's try to look ahead. And I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm speaking within a, uh, within a conference organized by Luisa Veroma, because uh, I'm sure 15 years ago, uh, no one was really thinking about selling fashion online. I'm actually sure that a lot of people were saying, you're never going to sell fashion online, never. You know, because people like to try their jumpers, like to try their shoes. They want someone in the shop that say, oh, you look beautiful, you know, that color is great on you, you know. But now it's not like that, you know. So that's, that's pioneerism in a way. So, uh, and I think with, uh, is exactly the moment uh, in, uh, in the wearable technologies uh, world uh, in which we can act the same way. You know, we, we, if we are brave enough uh, and clever enough, uh, we, can, uh, we, can really, we can really maybe get the right, uh, the right direction. So... A brief introduction about uh, what are wearable technologies. This picture is quite scary. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some examples of things that are actually quite scary. 
But uh, we start with some figures. Uh, according to Forbes, 71% uh, of 16 to 24 years old want wearable technologies. Morgan Stanley says that wearable technology has a potential of 1.6 trillion business. The implication and uses of wearable technologies are far-reaching and can influence the fields of health and medicine, fitness, aging, disabilities, education, transportation, enterprise, finance, gaming, and music. Wearable computers are a way of amplifying you. Of course, uh, amplifying you uh, really, it really depends uh, by who you are. You know, if you're clever can you, and amplify your cleverness or your curiosity is great. If you're not clever, can amplify your ignorance, you know. And that's, I mean, that happens as well with mobile phone. It happens with connection. It happens with internet. It happens with everything, every tool. So, of course, we want to be in 10, 15 years. Let's, let's take 10, 15 years as a, as a vision. We want to be smart, of course. We want to dress nice. But uh, we, want to, we, we still want to be connected, as uh, my colleague from Index was saying, Yandex was saying before, you know, we are connecting 24 hours per day. And uh, if we find a way to be uh, connected with the devices that are even handier, you know, that's going to be that's going to be better for us. And uh, there's a lot of implication, as I say before, that are useful. And I think I think that's the word, you know, if we manage if we manage to uh, to make this wearable technology being useful, you know, more and more are gonna are gonna get get into the market. So let's have a look of that guy on the left. You know, is wearing uh, glasses, so uh, it can have overlay navigation. It can, uh, it can have a lot of further information about what is looking, uh, where it's going, uh, and a lot, lot of other things. Uh, then he's wearing a short, uh, and uh, um, so we speak about uh, uh, smart fabrics, uh, smart textile, e-textile, um, textile interaction. And um, so maybe that shirt will be able to regenerate, uh, create power and create energy for all the other devices that he's wearing. Uh, is wearing a, a wristband as well. Uh, at the moment, uh, wristbands uh, are the most sold wearable technologies in, uh, at the, in the market. Is wearing a watch as well. And I don't have to tell you about uh, smart watches, you know, it's, uh, it's a news that uh, Apple produces, and not only Apple produces smart watches. Uh, he has a pair of shoes, and there's lots of space in a, in a, in a, in a pair of shoes to include uh, GPS technology, to include LED lights, uh, to include a lot of, uh, lot, of, lot of devices, a lot of computers. You know, computers are getting smaller, 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 and smaller, you know, so we can include them everywhere. And so, this is more or less uh, what the wearable technology affects uh, ourselves uh, now at the moment. Let's have a little bit of history as well and other figures. So uh, in 2011, uh, 14 million wearable devices were sold. Uh, in 2016, uh, we speak about 10 times, so 171 million. 35% of wearable technology was in the healthcare and medical sector. 61% on the wearable market linked with fitness, as I was saying before. And 69% uh, of of adults track uh, a health indicator for themselves or others. So, around 800 years ago, we had the first eyeglasses. Uh, 400 years after, there was the abacus ring, amazing technology that you can wear on your finger. First watch, first pocket watch in uh, 1762, and 1907, the first uh, wristwatch. 1977, the first calculator watch. When I started to prepare, have this presentation about wearable technologies, I had two things in my mind. The first one was my granny. My granny was deaf, you know, and uh, she was living with me and she had to take care of me and my sister. And uh, she was, you know, she couldn't see very well and she was really deaf, you know. So my dad found for her a pair of glasses that had included in the sticks two amplifiers. So she was able, very easy, you know, she was, she was able to see well and she was able to hear well. I mean, sometimes the battery was running, running out of charge, you know, and we couldn't realize that she was deaf again. But, uh, uh, and I mean, she, she, what she really wanted to do, she, she really wanted to watch TV, watch her favorite program, and be able to listen and understand Mike Bongiorno, which was a famous presenter that died recently. 
And uh, when she was, when, when this was happening, you know, she was, she was happy, you know. And that was useful for her, you know. And that was wearable technologies. And uh, I remember when I got my first Casio watch with calculator, my fingers were even too big to get the single, single digit, you know. But I was super happy, you know, to be able to make, uh, to me, you know, to make uh, something, you know, with, my, with something that I was wearing, you know. And that was 1977. And that, of course, very fast. 1978, uh, the first uh, computer integrated into a shoe. Uh, I think shoe, I personally think that shoes are really, uh, uh, really interesting because in shoes there is a lot of space and shoes are linked with our posture, which is very fundamental for our life and for our health. 1993, the first Pathfinder system, so GPS technology. 1994, head mounted camera, and now we all know what a GoPro is. 2009, the first Bluetooth earrings as well. Bluetooth is a great technology. 2010, Nike and sport bands. Then 2012, more fitness gadgets. 2013, Google Glass, Memoto, Apple Smartwatch, and so on. So I gathered the 10 uh, uh, wearable tech invention that are at the moment on the market or they're ready to be developed. We all know about Google Glasses, and uh, I mean, we're waiting for them on the market, really. And uh, I'm still not confident about speaking with someone that is watching me with the Google Glasses. I don't know why. But uh, uh, in, for example, a serger that uh, maybe is doing something on me and wear Google Glasses, you know, I would be pretty confident about the fact that uh, it can be helped by this kind of technology. Sun is developing uh, a smart wig, speaking about wig, hairs, and uh, that has technology integrated that uh, allowed us to make something to communicate, communicate wig to wig. You can choose your hair, human hair, feathers, whatever you want, buffalo hairs, and there will be some technology into that that can communicate with that. Then. Biostamp as well. This is a kind of a temporary tattoo integrated into the body that uh, allowed you to verify your personal identity. It's actually it's a computer, it's a device, and allowed you to do something, to open your gate or to do whatever you can, you can, uh, you can program it for, for doing it. Speaking about Nike Fuel Band, again, stick and find as well. It's mainly used for pets. When you lose your cat, and uh, previously, your cat has this stamp, uh, the stick on it. Uh, you will you will find it very easily. These are quite. Some of them are simply. Some of that are not. Some of them, as I say before, are quite scary, because I don't know how many of you are happy to have something implanted in your body. No. It depends how, how useful this is going to be. Schooly app. P1 helmet. Uh, it's very interesting. It's a helmet for motorbike riders. And uh, it's very interesting because along with giving information about direction or how fast you're going, uh, uh, as a rear camera, 180 degrees. So while you go on the motorbike, you can see what's happening behind as well. Jaubon is another wristband. Uh, very interesting because uh, uh, it's very uh, it's give you a, a huge amount of uh, information about what's happening when you're doing sport, when you're not doing sports, and when you're sleeping as well. Uh, Recon Jet Sport glasses are another kind of glasses that are used for uh, uh, alpine, uh, for professional, professional, uh, professional sports. Then, of course, the smart watches, but you probably know better, more than me about them. And Screen Eye Sport Vision, which is a hat that more or less works like a glass. These are the 10 top wearable tech invention at the moment. And I uh, forgot to say that when we speak about wearable technologies, there's three, three kinds of fields. Wearable technologies that we use as an accessory, so glasses, watch, can be a bag as well, uh, lenses, a hat. Uh, there are technologies included in what you wear, and that, I think, is even more interesting because, I mean, we have to wear something. So if we find a way to uh, integrate uh, uh, 
in a button Arduino or a processor or a camera that might be helpful. And the third one is uh, the technology that is into your body. I mean, my granny didn't, but you know, it happens that people as pacemaker or any other kind of technology that can help your blood going better or pistorius, you know, just two pair of legs. So speaking about, uh, I'm going to focus a little bit more about on, uh, on uh, smart fabrics and uh, interactive, uh, interactive um, textile. Because uh, uh, first of all, we're going to have a little video after where we're going to go deeper into that, uh, into that, uh, into that subject. But uh, as I said, uh, as we have to wear something, that can be, that can be one, uh, one path we can, we, the, the market can really take. And uh, for example, in Florence, there is a company called Plug and Wear, which is one of the most advanced company for, uh, uh, for the kind of things for smart fabrics that uh, is uh, try to include uh, uh, yarn, m uh, metal yarns, uh, like copper, for example, in silk, in cotton, and stuff like that. So is he able to create buttons you know, so you might have a button somewhere in your body, you know, that can do something, can create interaction, or can communicate. Of course, to interact and to communicate are the, are the keys of make these things work. And uh, so not only aesthetic, uh, even if I think aesthetic is, a, is a very important, uh, um, is very important in this field because uh, uh, speaking about fashion, uh, we buy mainly for aesthetic reason. Am I right or wrong? I think I'm right. So uh, wearable technologies uh, have to follow that need of the market. Okay, so if you're wearing something that, okay, is clever, has to be nice too. Or else it's difficult for big brands to be convinced to produce uh, thousands or millions of numbers of that piece. So speaking about implantable wearables, that's, this is really scary, but we'll see what are the top implantable wearables soon to be in your body. <laughs> is that actually, these 10 are, uh, at the moment, uh, are being developed. Of course, there's nothing like this in the market, but uh, there are serious studies about this. So first one is implantable smartphones. What do you think about that? Yeah, we can speak like this, or we can take shoes, we can speak with the shoes. Healing chips, okay, so something that you have in your body, for example, for obesity, there is a, there is a chip, there is a pill, actually, that make you feel, make you feel uh, not hungry anymore when the level of glucose or when you're exceeding eating food. Then we have cyber pills that talk to your doctor. If, of course, if your doctor wants to talk with you, but that's, that's, uh, these are, this is a kind of technology that, uh, allowed uh, your doctor to have uh, uh, several, uh, several information about you. And uh, just focus a little bit on this point. Uh, let's go back to my, to my granny. Uh, I, I wouldn't have mind to have, or my dad wouldn't have mind to have a kind of uh, um, way to, uh, to make sure my granny was all right when she was not living with, with her, you know. And, uh, and that's, that's useful, again. So uh, that can not maybe not this one, you know, but uh, uh, some technologies that really help us to uh, keep uh, health of someone or our health uh, checked can be really useful. Bill Gates implantable birth control. That's the technology that uh, Bill Gates Foundation is developing with MIT, and it's uh, remote control contraceptive for female. Smart tattoos. Again. As uh, now we have some inks that create circuits, electronic circuits on the paper. So if I'm writing with a pen, I can create circuits. Smart tattoos uh, are not far to be little computers underneath our skin. Bring computer interface as well. Meltable bio batteries. That's horrible, really sounds horrible. But uh, how can all these devices that we're wearing can work? We have, I mean, we produce energy in our body. You know, we have glucose, you know, that uh, is able to produce a lot of energy. 
but we cannot really have a plug that goes out from our body and we have to attach it to some, some, uh, some plugs, you know, because we already have probably all the plugs here that are full with, the, with phones. Uh, so we cannot say, so, do you mind if I get 10% energy from your, from your plug? Smart dust, uh, that's, uh, that's the, seems like technology is gonna become, uh, computers are gonna become smaller than, uh, than a piece of dust. So it'd be possible to have, uh, it'd be possible to have uh, working devices into ourselves and uh, that can give a lot of information. Again, medical, in the medical field can be quite interesting because, I mean, who's having a look at us can interact with uh, what we have inside. The verified self, uh, is a lot of, I mean, a lot of steps has been done in this field. The, the, the military field is the one that is, of course, and the security field are the ones that are more interested. You know, just track someone, track a group of people, track a part of an army, track troops, you know. Implantable 3D smart organs. So you can print your, you can print your own liver or, uh, or stuff like that. There's people that is trying as well to, to check if it's possible to, to 3D print uh, human skin as well. It sounds weird, of course it sounds weird, it sounds weird to me too, but it can be useful at some point. I just think, of course, these are 10, uh, ten uh, technologies that uh, can be useful, can be not be useful. It really, it really depends, depends by us. And just at the end, of course, I say the future is here, and I think George Orwell would faint by watching what we are what uh, producing. So this is more or less uh, is, uh, a picture of what's happening now in, uh, in uh, wearable technologies, whether they're good, whether they're bad. But, uh, and coming back to the job we did, uh, we did last year, as I say, we, through the support of uh, six, uh, six companies in Prato, next to Florence, there is a district of, uh, very important district for textile. Uh, companies like uh, Beste, Faliero Sarti, Stone Island, which is from Modena, not from, uh, from Prato and some other companies, we decided to put together some, uh, some students, uh, some experts in the field of uh, textile interaction and new technologies, and some experts in marketing, design, uh, and architecture. Put them together into a kind of a matrix uh, and do something uh, that, uh, according to me, was quite easy. Because what I discovered by uh, speaking with a lot of companies is that uh, there, are there are a lot of new technologies that are taking dust into the drawers of these companies. There's a lot of them. Why? Because maybe they try to make a step forward, but whenever they find something, they don't know how to market it. They don't know who to speak with. They don't know who to interact with to make it, uh, to make it real. So what we wanted to do, it was just to take out these, these ideas from their drawers and make them into, into reality. And I think it was quite, uh, it was quite, uh, it was quite useful. Um, the, and it was very important for us because we are a design school. So we have fashion designers, we have uh, uh, interior designers, we have a graphic designer and stuff like that. And this kind of course, uh, it, was not, uh, it was not so common into our program, but at the end it resulted very, very interesting because uh, uh, as, I say, as I say before, we try to see forward and uh, to give uh, the companies that we work with and the other students as well, a kind of, a, a kind of an image of what can happen and uh, how to market uh, new technology as well, which I think is, uh, is very difficult as well. And uh, so it was very important to match companies, was very important to match researcher and students, of course, because our students are 22, 23 years old. They're digital native, you know, so they're, uh, when they're expected to go into companies and innovate. And that was a way to give, uh, to give some tools to them to innovate. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna to show you a video. It's um, uh, the head of this course, uh, Troy Nattigal, uh, is, uh, is an American professor that worked with us for five years. He's now in uh, Eindhoven. Eindhoven is a, is a university that does a lot for, uh, for uh, new technologies in, uh, in, uh, in textile. And uh, he's going to explain a little bit uh, which are the results of, uh, of our job in, uh, during this course. So, leave the word to try. Hi, 
I'm Troy Noctegal. Until recently, I was a professor and research coordinator at the Institute of European Design in Florence, Italy. Uh, I've moved on since then, but I'm still the design chair of the International Symposium on Wearable Computing and very proud of the work that we did at the YET in Florence. We're in a very dynamic moment for wearable technology at the moment. If you look at what's going on at CES this last week, or if you take a look at even watches alone, Apple has a watch, Android in all of its different companies has watches. Uh, we can even look at Microsoft has a fitness watch at this point. This is not even going to talk about all the different glass or heads-up display systems like Google Glass that will be arriving here shortly. All of the accessories market is moving towards smart objects, so objects that can think, feel, and indicate what's going on in the world around us. But what's unique to Florence and the Florentine area is the fact that we have a dynamic textile center. Not only textiles, but leather, textiles, knitwear, all sorts of amazing things happen in the communities in and about Florence. It's these kind of companies that are bringing together some very, very interesting combinations, much like this textile sensor here. While this was made today on a knitwear machine in Robinzano, this is a push button. We can hook this up to electronics and when people push on it, we can see that they're pushing down on it. Uh, this is a company called Plug and Wear, and they make these amazing series of sensors that allow us to do electronics out of pure textiles. So when I was at the YET, I had the great pleasure of leading the Textile Interaction Group. The Textile Interaction Group was focused upon trying to figure out how can we integrate electronics and textiles together and say, make electronics on textile machines and make textiles on electronics machines. And we had some great success. Uh, thanks to the generous sponsorship of many of the companies in and around Tuscany that sponsored our program, we were able to give 10 different scholarships to students from Tuscany and abroad to come and study with us at the ED in these textile interaction subjects. We had a great leadership by the YED's scientific direction team, and that allowed us to bring in companies from all over Tuscany that are world class. Not only did we have plug and wear with their textile sensors and Ricardo Marchese, we also had the pleasure of having such greats as CP Company and Moreno Ferrari come and teach design with our students and talk to them about what they could make in the innovative future. We had Silvio Campili, who founded Grado Zero and Empoli, come and talk about what he's doing with the Formula One racing cars at the moment. We had uh, Fiore Vasile from the Fab Lab Cashina, who's an expert in Bluetooth 4.0, come to us and talk to us about how we can make our garments talk to our cell phones and how we could write programs and cell phone programs for our cell phones that would communicate with us, telling us what our shirt was telling us. We had Amleto from Fab Lab Mediterraneo come and talk to us about parametric design. How can we make individual garments for individual people? We worked with technologies like knitting, electronics, 3D printing, parametric design to create new and wonderful projects and study these things in a very unique, unique and interesting way. So this dynamic relationship between textiles and electronics yielded some very interesting projects. Most of the projects were done with four companies, but we also had some very interesting ones done outside as well in that we studied very much what was going on. We had a scarf that could heat you up, and when you were warm again, it would use your body's own heat to create electricity, so you could recharge your cell phone with it as well. We had a wonderful designer working with Emilio Cavallini come and figure out a way to make clothes that wouldn't smell. Using coffee grounds, he discovered a textile that would be able to absorb smells, punza, and turn it into clothing that we could wear for more, more time period, making them more ecologically fair and balanced. We had amazing projects like a hat that would communicate how you wanted to be. If you were feeling really excited and everybody around you was being quiet, the hat would make different colors of lights that would flash all around to encourage people to be more interactive and more excited. If you were in a noisy space like a bus and you wanted to read, the hat would slowly pulse and breathe to indicate to people that you wanted to be quiet and read. We worked with wonderful projects like a jacket that is opaque during the daylight and highly reflective when it's night or shady outside. So you could ride your bike with it at night or your motorcycle and it would be very much protective as you were riding down the road. 
Elena Fabrizi was a, did a wonderful, amazing project about flowers that are made in textiles that when the air quality is good, the flower is open and beautiful, and when the air quality is bad, they shrivel up and indicate to you that you shouldn't be breathing as much in that area. We had projects like 3D printed corsets that not only corrected your body posture and how you were sitting due to the fact that the position was holding you in a better position, but had an Arduino uh, integrated with it that would allow the person to see how they were sitting throughout the day and how they were standing throughout the day and how they could make that better. More than that, we didn't only do just clothing. We had architects work with us to do things like a deployable, foldable origami structure that when it was raining or windy outside or dark outside, the structure would open up and create a space. Whereas if it were nice and beautiful outside, the sculpture would automatically fold up on its own, allowing it to be an open air sort of effect. We took these projects not only to the different companies that we worked with, but we also showed them off at the International Symposium on Wearable Computing in Seattle, Washington this year. After which certain pieces were selected to go into the Microsoft Research Studio 99 museum space, where they stayed for September and October, allowing the entire world to see what kind of innovation center Florence has become and what we're working on in these parts of the world, causing many companies to contact our students from abroad to see what was going on here and how these companies could work with their company to create new and interesting products. Uh, this was a great level of international exposure that just truly shows the magic of design and innovation that happens in Florence. Um, I was very sad that I had to leave the Ed Florence. I've just moved with my family up to Eindhoven where I will be teaching in the laboratory on wearable senses where we work in parametric design and the possibility of creating garments that augment our, sensors, our senses so that they can hear better for us, see further than we can see, tell us what the weather's going to be like tomorrow, simply because they're able to look at the barometric data closer. Thank you very much to all of the students in the program, to our scientific committee, to our wonderful sponsors that helped us create some amazing things, and especially to our director, Alessandro Colombo, who helped and truly did make this happen. I hope that you enjoy what you see. Okay. Hi, I'm Troy Nachtigal. Until recently, I was a professor and research coordinator at the Institute of European Design in... So thanks, Troy. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, and we'll see what happens in 10 years. We maybe might meet again in 10 years and see what kind of technologies we will be wearing or we will have in our bodies. Maybe we can swap brains. Uh, you can take your brains and I can give her my brain. And you never know. But uh, I just hope that curiosity will make every one of us make a little step forward and let's see what happens. Thank you very much again.